Number 21 in 2.6 is a problem that doesn't require the squeeze theorem. It's just in the normal section where the directions just say, hey, find that limit. And it really requires two tricks uh, in order to do this. One of which I really should put in the notes, but I know that I haven't as of the time that I'm recording this. And the other trick I was kind of hoping you guys might have figured out on your own. So you tell me which one tripped you up on this one. The first problem I see right here is the squareds. We've got an x squared and we've got a sine squared of x. Now, if you guys recall, the only limit that I told you guys that you needed to know was the limit as x approaches zero of the sine of x over x, which is equal to one. Now with the x squared and the sine squared of x, you'll notice that's in the reciprocal uh, direction right here. It's sine of x over x is what we wanted, but we have the reciprocal of that. And the squares are the problem as well. Well, here's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to make this the limit as x approaches zero. And what I'm going to do is just break this thing up into an x over one of the sine of x's right there and multiply that by an identical fraction of x over the sine of x. So that takes care of the squares. Now the other problem though is, in order to get this, uh-oh, the two fractions that I have here are both the reciprocals of that. And what I really should put in the notes is that if you knew, for example, that the limit uh, as x approaches some random value, let me just call this a, of a fractional function, what if I called it like f of x over g of x, okay? If that limit was equal to, let me just say for the sake of argument that it's some fraction right now, let me call that b over c, it would makes sense then, I hope, that we could take the limit as x approaches a of the reciprocal of this function, g of x over f of x, and we would simply get the reciprocal of the original answer, which in this case would be c over b. Now, if that's the case, which I believe it is, then this doesn't worry me that much. These limits, notice it's still as x approaches zero here, these limits would simply be the reciprocal of this limit right here. But wait, this is kind of dumb. Since this limit is one, the reciprocal of one is itself. So it really doesn't impact things one bit that these are x over sine of x rather than sine of x over x simply because one is its own reciprocal. But if you ever saw something like this and you had an actual fraction for that first limit, like two over three, then if you reciprocated the function, the limit of two thirds would reciprocate as well and you'd get three halves. But as it were, I don't think this one is that bad. That limit right there is the reciprocal of one, which is one, times, again, the reciprocal of one, which is one. It looks like I'm doing the distributive property there, guys. I'm not, but it's really the product law for limits that says the limit of a product is equal to the product of the two individual limits. That's why it looks like the distributive property. Anyway, one times one and all that work, we're going to get a nice simple answer here of one for problem 21 in 2.6.